Good morning guys and uh, today we're going to have something slightly different for you. Um, the problem is at the moment is that it is the high tide in the UK and England of the coronavirus pandemic and so um, we're not really supposed to travel anywhere um, except for essential travel. You're only really out, allowed out for a bit of a essential exercise every day. So I can't bring you any uh, videos from the uh, City of Light Paris or the uh, wilds of England or the uh, English borders of Wales or Northumberland and places like that. So um, I'm only able to make you a historical video from very close to my own house. Now luckily I live in a great location for this because I live in the jewel of the south, uh, the pride of the M4 corridor. Yes of course I'm talking about Reading and Reading is a town luckily very rich in history. In fact you can trace many of the most important moments in English history from Reading itself and so I'm going to be taking you on a little tour in the next few weeks of English history through the history of Reading. Join me. So we're going to start off our video today um, with the uh, perhaps earliest point in English history. Um, and I really mean English history in that because we, we've got to have a bookend on, of this somehow. Um, so we're going to start off with the Anglo-Saxons. Now just a little bit of context for those of you who may not be aware. Anglo-Saxons, they're really a group of people from northern Germany who settled in what we now called England and it's where England gets its name and most of its language from. Um, now you can take that too far, there's lots of different uh, people and groups and, and things like that have contributed to the English language, the Romans, the Normans, but the most basic words that we have in our English language come from the old Anglo-Saxon language and that's why we call it England, Angloland, land of the Anglos, Anglo-Saxons. Um, and today we're going to be looking at them and their conflict with the Vikings. So I'm going to give you a little bit of context in a second about the Vikings as well, just so you understand today's uh, uh, history, history lesson from beautiful sunny Reading. Um, so the Vikings have a bit of a fearsome reputation, which is a little bit undeserved really. Um, they weren't that much more fearsome than any other group of people or, uh, you know, warriors or anyone like that of the time. In fact, the reason they've got such a bad reputation is because unlike many other groups in Europe at that time, the Vikings were slow to the party. They were, they liked Christianity after it was cool. And because of that, um, they spent a lot of their earlier years as a group of historical people attacking Christian monast monasteries, stealing gold and silver. And the Christian church being the kind of internet of its time of the dark ages, they spread a bad reputation of the Vikings for that reason. The other reason is the Vikings were a kind of, um, they passed their history down orally through poetry and song and, and spoken word history rather than writing it down. And so the Anglo-Saxons, the kind of enemies of the Vikings in many ways, they wrote their history down more than the Vikings did. And so their version of events, their side of the story has kind of stayed with us longer. So the Vikings have a kind of undeserved negative reputation for that reason. Well, we're going to be looking at a little bit of Viking history here by the banks of the river during my essential exercise here in sunny Reading. See you soon. See you soon. So here we are, the beautiful uh, River Kennet here in East Reading. And we're just going to head down there under this railway bridge, these railway bridges and that kind of gas pipe bridge through this mist to the scene of today's Reading history, the first battle of Reading. Now just look at this atmospheric scene here, a little bit of mist on the water, a couple of swans there just enjoying the morning. And this is where on the 4th of January, 871, a momentous event took place, the Battle of Reading. I'd like you to imagine two armies locked in mortal combat 
the army of Ethelred and his brother Alfred, king and brother of the king of the West Saxons, the, the kings of Wessex. And on the other side, we have a massive Viking army led by Bagsedge and Halfdan Ragnarsson, the Danish army come to invade Wessex. Now the question is, why were these two big armies, this mighty Anglo-Saxon and this mighty Viking army meeting and going at each other here? Well, um, you've got to think that back in the Dark Ages, back in the ninth century in the year 871, um, there's not an awful lot of roads um, to get around on. There's some Roman roads and some ancient roads that go inland, but really the best way to get around and the safest and quickest way to get around and transport heavy goods and, and things quickly is by river. And so Reading, this is where Reading becomes important as a place in English history. The reason being is because what you see here, there, that's the River Thames, the mighty River Thames, the biggest river in England. And the Thames links here, the Thames goes further down there and it links here where you can see this bridge here um, with the River Kennet. So that is why Reading became such a strategic location. There's these two rivers uh, linked here. And it was also important for the Vikings as well because at the time Reading was nestled in between these two rivers, between the River Thames and the River Kennet. And still the center of it really is still today. So, um, the Vikings thought, well, this is a good little place to set up a defensive position. Now, the reason they come here was because at that time, England wasn't one unified country like it is now. It was several small kingdoms. Uh, the Vikings had already conquered or Northumbria in the northeast and Anglia in what we now, well, still call East Anglia. Um, and so they had their eyes set on the last big kingdom of England, the Anglo-Saxon kingdom, of Wessex uh, and that's what they were going to invade in this big huge Danish army as the Anglo-Saxon uh, Chronicle calls it was heading down into Wessex and they had their eyes set on Wessex and that's why they were here in Reddit. Okay let's go and find out what else they did. Now you might remember that I said the uh, Vikings had a fearsome reputation and whilst it's true they were certainly great warriors they probably weren't that much better at fighting than any other uh, group of people around at the time. Um, what actually made them more effective um, was what something that always helps you in any kind of military situation which is big new technology. Um, what the Vikings had was the, the Viking longboat and um, the Viking longboat was a boat that allowed you to travel great distances over seas like the North Sea from what is from where they came from what is now Denmark and Norway and Sweden but it also had something which called a very shallow draft which meant that the boat the Viking longboat could not only travel over seas but it could also because it's the bottom of the boat wasn't that deep it didn't go into the down into the water that that far you could they could use the same longboat to not just travel across the sea but also go up rivers inland um, and so very quickly after arriving from across the sea, they could go up a river like the River Thames that you see here and attack by surprise very quickly settlements like London and other places like that. In fact, the nursery rhyme London Bridge is falling down is thought to uh, come from the time when the Vikings sailed up the Thames, pulled down London Bridge um, in one of their attacks on London. OK, so it was the Viking longbow that really gave the Vikings that edge over other people of the time. So what you see behind me here is the River Kennet and the Vikings set up on the other side of the bank in what was then Reading between the River Kennet and the River Thames and on the on the northern side there they built themselves a kind of defensive trench and they sat there waiting for the Anglo-Saxon Wessex army of Ethelred and Alfred. 
uh, and, and the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle reports that Alfred and Ethelred and their Saxon army approached Reading, destroying any Viking outposts and things like that on their way. And they tried to get into the town of Reading that the Vikings were defending. Um, unfortunately for the Anglo-Saxons, for Alfred and Ethelred, the Vikings had many fearsome tactics. They were good swordsmen, they had all the shields and chainmail and armor that you would expect of an army of the time to have. And they had one great tactic called going berserker. Now you might hear, if you're someone who lives in England, about, the ta that, about someone going berserk. It basically means they're going a bit crazy and a bit, you know, really angry and really, um, you know, like that. And uh, this comes from the Viking tactic of going berserker now. Some people say that might have been to do with magic mushrooms or some sort of, you know, um, special potions they were taking but it probably just means working yourself up into a kind of psychological frenzy to take on your enemy and kind of running out in front of your army and swinging a perhaps a, a massive axe or sword around and going hell for leather at your uh, at your opponents but that was probably what the vikings did in the battle of reading and it certainly worked for them they they won they won that battle they beat alfred and ethelred and uh then they uh chased really um the Anglo-Saxons back further into Wessex, defeating them in many further battles. And it ended up with Alfred and the other Anglo-Saxons having to do a deal with them and, and pay them off and come to a negotiated truce that way. But anyway, yeah, that's the story of the first battle of Reading between the Vikings and the Saxons.